So our theme today is freedom to open. And today is Ascension Sunday, and if you didn't grow up in a church that celebrated Ascension Sunday, this is the day that Jesus rises up and floats up into heaven. And he, before he does this, he gathers his disciples and followers together. And he says, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you. That everything written about me in the law of Moses, the prophets and the Psalms, must be fulfilled. Then he opened his disciples and minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, thus it is written that the Messiah is to suffer and to rise from the dead on the third day. And that repentance and forgiveness of sins is to be proclaimed in his name to all nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses to these things. And see, I am sending you out just like my parent promised. So stay here in the city until you have been clothed with power from on high. He was talking about the Holy Spirit. And next week is Pentecost Sunday, so be sure to wear red if you have a red shirt or something. And then he blessed them, lifting up his hands. And while he was blessing them, he was carried up into heaven. At that time, the disciples fell and worshipped him and kept gazing up at heaven. And when they came back down, spiritually and emotionally, they returned to Jerusalem with great joy and said that they were continually in the temple blessing God. As I was preparing for this sermon, I saw a wonderful picture of Jesus' ascension. And I couldn't find it again. I spent an hour looking for it. Uh, but it was a black and white woodcut. You know what a woodcut is? It's cut into wood and, uh, and finely etched. Now, in the picture, you see Jesus is rising up as the disciples are gazing up at the heavens up at him as he disappears into the clouds. Now, if you look closely at the picture, not in the clouds, but on the ground, you see footprints on the earth. And I believe the artist carefully etched the footprints of Jesus down on the level where the disciples are standing with their mouths open, as we would have been too. Perhaps the artist was simply imagining a homey little detail that isn't in the scriptures. But perhaps I think the artist is more likely pressing us with that old question. Why do you stand there looking up into heaven? Look at the footprints on the earth, the ones that Jesus left for us. The muddy footprints of Jesus are all over the pages of the Gospels. Can you see the footprints of Jesus when he entered the wilderness? Each time he was tempted to claim earthly power and glory, he reached up and touched the words of Torah. One does not live by bread alone. Amen. Worship the Lord your God and serve only God. Can you see Jesus walking on the wrong side of the street with the wrong people? I certainly can. Can you see Jesus walking up to a sycamore tree and then looking up at Zacchaeus, the tax collector, perched up there in the branches, just wanting a glimpse of this Messiah? And Jesus says, come down from the tree, Zacchaeus, and let's walk over to your house for a meal. Can you see Jesus walking with his eyes fixed towards Jerusalem, towards his purpose in life? Can you see him stumbling towards the cross? loving us to the very end. The Holy Spirit moved Jesus in certain directions, not others. The Holy Spirit was very purposeful about the direction that Jesus was to go in. And Jesus proclaimed this when he did so in his first sermon from the scroll of Isaiah. The Spirit has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of God's jubilee. And then Jesus finished reading that. He rolled up the scroll and he said, Today the scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. This is my road map. This is how I will walk on the earth. Come and follow me. And churches, we don't need to write a lot about mission statements and vision and all that because it's right here that the prophet Isaiah spoke, that Jesus spoke. And that's what I think the church is called to do. The Spirit has anointed me to bring good news to the poor sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, and to proclaim the year of God's jubilee. Amen. If we could just do that, that's a pretty full list of stuff to do right there. 
There was a young girl that had just graduated from high school and she had a wonderful opportunity to go work with Mother Teresa when Mother Teresa was still alive in Calcutta, Indiana, India, Indiana, India. <laughs> she was very disappointed when she learned that Mother Teresa was gone, was out on missions and wouldn't be there. The first day the girl gets there, she ends up washing dishes. The second day she's there, she's doing the laundry. The third day, she's folding the laundry, the clean laundry. She finally asks one of the other sisters, I'm really disappointed that I'm not going to get to meet with Mother Teresa, and I'm really disappointed that I'm not doing the work that Mother Teresa would be doing if she was here. Mm -hmm. To which the sister said, you know what Mother Teresa does when she's here? She does the dishes, she does the laundry, she folds the laundry. Sometimes we want to do things that seem easy, or that we think are going to make a profound difference in the world. Say a few flowery words and all of a sudden the whole world has changed. And yet sometimes we're just called to wash the dishes, fold laundry, and do things like that. Simple things. I believe that that same spirit that anointed Jesus now anoints you and me. That's what Jesus tried to tell his followers before he left them. You will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses. <coughs> Leave footprints where I have left footprints. Dietrich Bonhoeffer, one of my favorite heroes, who was put to death in a Nazi concentration camp, kept the message of Jesus going. He said, the body of Christ takes up space on the earth. That is, the body of Christ makes footprints. A truth, a doctrine, or a religion needs no space for themselves. They are disembodied entities, that is all. But the incarnate Christ needs not only ears or hearts, but living people who will follow him. And one of my famous sayings that I like to say is, it's very easy to worship Jesus. It's a lot tougher to follow him, to do as he says, to follow in his what he laid out for us, to how we were to be, what we were to do. Why do you stand looking up in heaven? Sometimes it's a lot easier to look up at heaven for a pure world up there or out there or somewhere, especially when we think of the church as the body of Christ. After all, we see so many blemishes, so many things that are wrong in our churches. And perhaps you've been one of those that said, show me a church where the ministers aren't self-serving, where the people aren't hypocritical, where love is genuine, then I'll become a member. You're going to wait a long time. Perhaps such a church lives only in our memories, a time when those disciples first believed, when faith could move mountains, when people's motives were pure. But yet, there is no one here today but us in this time and this space. Now we can stand and look up at heaven, worshiping, which is a good thing to do at times. Or we can believe that the promise of Jesus when he says, you will receive power from the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and you will be my witnesses. You are to make footprints in and through ordinary, imperfect communities of faith that seldom get it right. <laughs> Ascension Day is not a call for us to look up. We're not alone, you and I. We can dance and we can climb, we can run and get knocked down. We can lie on the grass or sit watching the late night news. And we are still not alone. The Holy Spirit is always there with us, giving us insight, power, wisdom. And guess what? When we do those ordinary things, oftentimes, Jesus will surprise us and just show up in the middle of what we are doing that's not so extraordinary. Like the open boxes, we need to have an open heart, mind, and spirit to receive what God will give to us. We can be filled with joy and passion and love. We can be filled with a fire in our bones to go and share God's love with our world and our community. I think that's one thing that's really lacking these days. When did people stop loving one another? Stop respecting one another? Stop caring for one another? And if we could 
just embody that in our church, in our community, and go out in the world and embody it. And one by one, I believe people can be changed and transformed. They see something within us that is different. I mean, we are different people, and that's a good thing. Will you pray with me, please? Beloved God, we thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Help us now to open our hearts, our minds, and our spirits to receive what you will give to us. Perhaps some of us today may just need a gentle nudge, a message, something that will wake us up in our slumber and remind us that the Holy Spirit is still here, O oh God, making a difference in this world. But it needs our hands and our feet, our minds and our spirit, our eyes, our love, our passion. Let us not grow weary with well-doing, but let us leave this place today renewed in mind, body, and spirit. And in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.